All right, my dear friends, it's um, AKRX here, and uh, today we are going to do this uh, very special tutorial video because uh, this is actually not uh, something that you may have seen around before because this is a brand new uh, model kit which was made by yours truly, AKRX. So uh, um, this means that from now on you are, you are able to uh, acquire this kit for yourself and this video specifically is designed for you to be able to um, get some hints and tips on how to better prepare and uh, build this kit in case you are relatively new to the hobby and you want to get the model and have your own Tyrannosaurus Rex in a 1 to 35 scale. The model itself uh, altogether measures approximately um, 34 uh, centimeters, that is the actual Tyrannosaurus itself, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, is not particularly a large piece, but it's uh, decent enough in size, it's also very easy to, you know, transport, it's uh, quite easy, you know, in terms of being portable, so that's a very good side to it, and uh, it's also just big enough to be able to see the details and obviously paint them. Now, um, here we have our uh, quick layout of what the kit actually is made up from and um, this is basically just seven different parts that make it up and you can see more or less where everything is meant to go so i think that's quite straightforward we know what a dinosaur specifically a t-rex would look like when you know so all these parts like legs and stuff you know exactly where that goes now, uh, this is just a brief overview here with the tools that we are going to be using. There will be more tools throughout the video, so if you can, try to play, pay close attention. Uh, but I will try to uh, obviously comment, you know, include the comments or maybe even some extra screens there and then just to make sure that I keep you all up to date. Uh, because uh, throughout the video I realized that I needed some other stuff which I did not include in this picture on its own because I took the picture before I actually started the filming and uh, I should have actually done it the other way around. But um, I hope that's not gonna create too many uh, issues for the um, uh, process. Now um, here's the important part, um, this one here. Please uh, pause the video in this uh, section and uh, do take time to read it and uh, because it's a safety notice and I really want you guys to be fully aware of what's happening here. So pause the video now and uh, just resume playing whenever you read the uh, screen. Alright, so here we go. Now let's get down to the main part of the video. Alright, so here we have the base and uh, we just try to kind of measure up you know the surface areas of these legs to see how well they fit and as you can see they fit quite well and uh, of course uh, sometimes if you find that they don't you can use this big file or you can use a dremel and just quickly clean up the extra material and just keep dry fitting it whenever although i kept this area unglued anyway now one other important part is with a small file and uh, later i will show you as well in a few moments, uh, yeah, the hobby knife, you see the sheet as well, you always keep that at hand whenever you're not using and keep it safe. But yeah, just use these kind of motions, not as fast as here in the time lapse, but that's the general idea, you just want to carefully remove these seam lines uh, where the molds, uh, you know, parts come together uh, just to kind of blend it in a bit more. And if you find that you are unable to remove um, quite a lot, you know, quite a good piece of it and there's still some visible, don't worry too much because most of the times the angle that you're gonna look at your um, piece is gonna be such that you will not really see it anyway and once you paint it you can obviously hide it a bit more with the, all the paint scheme and stuff so a lot of the things that they barely gonna be visible and uh, unless you really kind of pay attention and obviously you building the model you will know it's there uh, which may be quite frustrating I can admit that However, I would not uh, really make much of it, just uh, remove as much as you can and uh, just uh, 
try to kind of be very patient uh, so that you don't accidentally remove the excess of the material or damage any of the detail. Now of course um, dry fitting and once uh, done that just using this drill tool you can use the same uh, sort of tool when you know if you're doing a dremel that's also possible and uh, the main reason why i'm doing this is um, to uh, let uh, you know to get the technique in there that's called pinning um, especially those of you who have watched my warhammer 30k slash 40k horse heresy series uh, hobbyists, those guys, they will definitely know what pinning means and probably some of you other model, model collectors and builders will also know what that is. So what I'm doing now is I'm using these uh, little... Um, oh, oh come on, I, I keep forgetting what this tool is called all the time. I, and, I, and here I thought I knew, learned English, you know, after 14 years <laughs> living in a for, you know English-speaking country. Anyway, so we use this uh, steel wire, you can use a brass wire as well, you can use a uh, copper wire, but Still, I find this the best one for me personally because it's sturdy enough and at the same time it can be shaped as well. So I use this to basically put the parts together to kind of keep them relatively secure. It helps for the gluing and building process overall. And you remove the access with the clipper part of this little thing right there. Or you just use clippers basically uh, to make sure that they are strong enough to actually cut steel wire though. And uh, then you dry fit and just make sure that parts fit properly. And you repeat the process with the rest of the parts like the arms and uh, all of those. And obviously keep dry fitting as much as you can. Just making sure that they are perfectly, you know, intact and uh, that you are able to uh, basically, you know, fit them in the right place. Once you're happy with that, then you use this super glue. You can use any super glue really that is good enough for using resin. Uh, this is just the one I'm using here, but there are other types I use in general. And then you just secure it in the same position that you did when you were doing your dry fit. And obviously you try to remove some excess if you can uh, from the areas and probably use something quite nice and soft to just squeeze it in, in the gaps where it didn't get to. And now with that done, uh, what we do is we try obviously some of the dry fit for the legs as well. Just make sure that it eventually gets to the points where you want them to go on the base. And uh, now that's done, um, we can move on to the next stage and uh, start doing our gap filling. For this we are using these rubber tipped uh, so-called brushes and uh, I am using here something that is called the green stuff. And as you can see, I'm rolling the two counterparts, which are usually made up of the blue and the yellow, and thus they form the green. And the tool that I just showed you is the tool that I've used for making the scales. I will put a small screen cap over here to show you uh, where I can, where you can use. Basically, what you do is you just use this little texture part and you um, apply the clay to it, and then you bake it and uh, then you can use it to basically staple across and that will give you the exact uh, same texture as you uh, see on my uh, T-Rex uh, model. So um, as you can see once I filled up the gaps with the green stuff or whatever other filler material you prefer to use of an equivalent function, maybe some kind of other epoxy sort of uh, thing majigi. So uh, then I just use this stamp tool to blend it in as much as possible. Of course I'm being a little bit sloppy here because I have to do it at a specific rather a bit uncomfortable angle given that in my room I'm a bit limited in my poses um, and uh, this means obviously that I have to compromise with potential quality of how I do it. If I were doing it off screen um, off the camera I would have obviously <laughs> done a much better job but uh, I'll have to just make do with what we have and even then it didn't really do any major negative effects to this first demo that I'm putting together. And considering also that this is my uh, one of my worst sort of castings that I picked out of my sort of generally acceptable ones. Um, sorry about my head popping in this uh, frame from time to time, I just couldn't really see it properly so that's why it appeared. But anyway, yes, um, this is one of my worst ones, so when you see me doing something this is as bad as usually it can get, which in most cases, which means that uh, as a customer when you purchase this kit you will not get 
get it as bad as I am having it. I'm just showing you the more sort of extreme case, which um, basically it has like few minor points, you know, of gaps on the teeth sometimes because uh, I and ever since I once I found out I had to obviously fix the mold a little bit. Then I had to, you know. Uh, make sure that I change slightly, you know, adjust uh, aside from the mold, just maybe kind of try to be a bit more careful in my casting techniques and all of that stuff. So, uh, obviously, this is like something that needs to be done and taken into account. But you will not, just trust me, you will not get it as bad as this, but this is what to do if by any reason you should get it as bad as this. But yeah, I, I can assure you I won't because I prepare and handle every single kit before I would ship it to a customer. Uh, so, you know, I, I will not leave it, uh, you know, completely untouched. I will definitely prepare it for you the best way I can to make sure that it's, you know, presentable enough for you to get uh, started. And as you can see, I'm just using this uh, rubber tip tool here and um, just putting all these little uh, parts uh, in the gaps into the right shape and squeezing them in there just to make sure that they fill up as much of that space as possible. And um, uh, yep, still going, still going. So yeah, you can basically use like small bits. Uh, don't use over too much because sometimes it might overlap a bit too much on your detail and then it might be a bit hard to take off because it's quite sticky. So uh, one more thing to note is try to keep the surfaces that you're working with, specifically the stamp tool or your hands, a little bit moist because the green stuff will stick to it and it will uh, just get a bit annoying otherwise. So you do, you do want to keep your hands and your tools that you're using uh, to handle green stuff a little bit, you know, moist, just to be sure that it works smoothly. But of course, uh, the surface where, where you're sticking it to, uh, keep it as dry as you can, obviously. Don't uh, work with a moist uh, surface here, because otherwise it won't stick. And of course, that's one of the ways to get your fingers a little bit sore, because, uh, you know, uh, quite a lot of little movements there and then, and as you can see, this is where I messed up, given that I I'm not really doing it in a very comfortable uh, pose since I'm doing it for the camera, so that, that was not supposed to happen, just so you know. And chances are you're probably gonna be doing this off camera, so uh, unless you want to record your own tutorial on how you're building the kit, which I don't mind doing, by the way, you can do if you want to. Um, and uh, I won't have any problem with that. In fact, I'm actually gonna be very curious to see how would anybody of you here who would be interested in acquiring this kit and if you do, uh, how would you build it and paint it? And specifically, I would love to see your paint jobs and how you basically put it together. This is one of those things that would really give me a lot of joy. So if you do happen to have a channel here on YouTube and uh, if you don't mind, please do upload them or at least send me some pictures and I might do a video of a collector video of some of the customers eventually who would, you know, of how they did their work and all of that. Maybe we can also get some of these submissions and maybe do like a raffle ticket kind of you know prize winners sort of thing and uh, you get a reward not for being the best but just by random picking sort of thing for everybody who sends their uh, pick you know who sub shares shares their work and i could also if you are not a member already in this uh, group on facebook that i'm running uh, the polio world creative corner i can uh, then in that case share you know your work there if you don't mind as well just to see what sort of things people do in now this one here you see it's quite a big gap right there that's one of the actually miscast parts of the arms that i decided to use for my demonstration just to show you how how bad i got it just specifically hand picked it just for this tutorial um Obviously yours one is not gonna get that bad, you'll have a very nice casting, but uh, I decided to pick a bad one just because, well, why not? I mean, uh, green stuff fixes that issue anyway, and um, once it gets painted, uh, and uh, at the time of me recording this voiceover, actually it has already been painted, so, um, which you have seen in the thumbnail design, so this is not even noticeable, like, it's like it's not even there. And of course, as always, using the rubber tip, making sure that it's uh, moist enough to get the green stuff in shape, just making sure, you know, guiding it in the right place before it cures. 
because once it starts curing, it's becoming increasingly, you know, difficult to, increasingly difficult to manipulate, so you wanna kind of try to do it as quickly as possible. Although, it takes a long time for it to cure completely, but it loses, but it starts forming its basic shape once you leave it out there for too long. So, you wanna kind of try to be a bit swift, but kind of don't rush it too much, of course. Uh, by all means, take your time to make sure that you get it set up right. But, um, uh, yeah, do mind... Uh, the fact that obviously once it starts setting it's gonna be incredibly incredibly difficult to handle that is if you're working with green stuff i don't know how other epoxy sort of materials work so uh, i've used quite a few in the past but uh, mostly preferred green stuff because it was just one of those that i know very well and i have a long history with it so maybe eventually i might try something else like a millipot or something some other stuff or whatever but um, green stuff with its pros and cons is just something that I just know very familiar, you know, one of those. But anyways, regardless of what you're using, yeah, this is one of the things you need to be quite mindful of. And obviously, once you've done all your detail work and blended everything in, try to avoid accidentally touching it with your fingers. And now that this is done, we can then do another dry fit. I personally left my base and the T-Rex unglued, which means that obviously you will see the lines but uh, it means that you can remove it if you want to. Now, of course, uh, this video has been done in a time lapse and uh, you would naturally, you know, in real life, I, it took me about two hours to do it. That is waiting for the glue, you know, to set. That's also including uh, me waiting for the uh, green stuff to set as well before I could start, you know, experimenting and putting it in the base and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff involved waiting as much as anything, really. So, also cleaning up in between of all these extra bits that fall out once you drill and file your uh, resin and all of that. Obviously, you're gonna need to keep it clean because you don't... and. You know what I mean, like all of these things, they do take up extra time. And overall the whole thing took me about two hours, but that's because I was using all of the hand tools. With a Dremel it might take you quicker, but you have to be a little bit more careful, because sometimes with a Dremel if you do a one extra wrong move, you could mess up your kit and you would that would mean you'd have to patch it up and usually that can be a little bit pain, you know, painful to do. So you don't want to be doing that. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's really it for now, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comments below. Now, also, I wanted to uh, say that uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, I also have a Patreon account, and uh, for everybody who becomes a Patreon, uh, you will then... Um, be able to get a 10% discount voucher uh, for, you know, purchasing for the first time purchase of uh, any of my um, uh, kits. And this is the first one that is coming for now, which is already available. And, um, uh, if, and also, uh, every so often what I can do as well, and perhaps for now I will do like a limited time uh, event, uh, maybe uh, like in uh, November uh, time, so there's still quite a bit of time to, to wait. But in November I will start a special uh, campaign, uh, which means that everybody who is a patron will then uh, not only automatically will get this 10% discount for the purchase, but also you will be able to um, uh, win uh, a kit. So uh, basically uh, I will do like maybe a couple of them as a pr prizes or depending on how many of you are actually going to be entering. So I will try to keep it, you know, at a reasonable level, proportional. And uh, uh, then uh, I will pick the winner at the end randomly. But regardless of who wins, uh, everybody will still get their first purchase 10% off voucher. So if you want to know how it works, then just either message me here on my channel or you can get in touch with me in Paleo World Creative Corner on my Facebook group. Alternatively, you can send me an email right here. And um, also, uh, 
if you are once again if you are new to the channel please like subscribe and share all your support will be greatly appreciated and uh, well i guess until i'll see you when i when i get down to the next video whichever that is and part two for that is also coming and i will try to show you uh, how i painted my first demonstration piece until then take care everybody bye bye